we're going to be talking about this section 2.6 is combination of functions and composite functions. First of all, we're going to talk about finding the domain of a function, how to combine function using the algebra of functions, specify domains, and form composite functions, determine domains and composite functions, and write functions as composites. So first of all, we're going to talk about domain. And in domain, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look for limitations. Domain, as you've studied in the past, are your x's. So what we're doing is we're trying to figure out if you have a function, what are the x's that we can plug into the function? Before we've talked about domain and we've had graphs or we've had relations and we found domain that way. But this time we're actually looking at a function itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the limitations. And right now we're going to study two limitations to our domain. One is if you, ha if you have a variable in the denominator. And if we have a variable in the denominator, the reason this limits our domain or our x's is because if there is a variable, a, a value that we can plug in for x that will make us divide by zero, then therefore we do not include that in our domain. So anytime you see a variable in the denominator, you have a potential for values that are not going to be used for x. Also, a variable under a radical uh, with an in even index. So the reason that this comes up is because we do not want to plug in an x value that will give us a value that is uh, imaginary. So this would be an undefined value and then this would be uh, an imaginary number. And as you guys well know, what gives us an imaginary number is if your radicand is negative. So what we're going to do uh, is limit our x's so that we do not have a negative radicand. We'll look at a couple examples. For starters, not everything has a limited domain. So if you look at a problem like this where you have f of x is equal to x squared minus 7x, we're trying to figure out what values can we plug in for x in this function. Well, the truth is, is you can square anything and multiply anything by negative 7 and then find their difference. So our uh, domain for this one will be all real numbers. And then, of course, the interval notation for that, if you're asked to write an interval, would be negative infinity comma positive infinity. So there are no limitations to this domain, and the reason we know that is because we don't have a variable in the denominator, nor do we have a variable under radical when the index is even. But looking at our next example, now we have this. Now, this numerator, I don't care about the numerator. 3x plus 2, I can, I can have anything. I can divide anything by a number. I can divide something zero by a number, I can divide one by a number, I can divide negative one by a number, but what causes the problem is the fact that we have uh, a variable in our denominator. So what we do not want to do is uh, divide by zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the values that when plugged into our denominator will make it equal to zero. So we set our denominator equal to zero. Now as you guys can see this is a quadratic, so what we do, we should find two solutions. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor it. So two things that will multiply to give me 3. Uh, that when added together will give me uh, negative 2. Because it's a negative 3, we're looking for uh, their difference. So those are our values. So our excluded values are going to be 3 and negative 1 when you set both the factors equal to 0 and solve. So these are actually the values that are going to be excluded for our, from our domain. So if you think about your domain, if this is your number line, okay, our domain is going to be any x's along this number line except for a couple values. So we're going to have excluded values here and here, and these excluded values are going to be uh, negative 1 and a positive 3. So those are kind of the holes in our domain. So if, if you're asked to write it, you would basically say this. You would say your domain is all real numbers. This will take me a second to write, but all real numbers. And then you would say, but x cannot be equal to 3 or negative 1. So those are the values that when x is plugged in here, and we plug in the values of 3 and negative 1, it makes us divide by 0. Now interval notations, basically since we have two holes in our domain, we're going to list each section. So this section right here would be from negative infinity to negative 1. Parentheses here, parentheses here because the negative 1 is not included. And then you would say union, 
and then from negative 1 to 3, which would be the middle section of our interval, and then we would say union, this section of our interval would be 3 to infinity. So if you look at your domain in interval notation, it basically includes all of the numbers except for negative 1 and 3. The last one we need to look at is anytime you have a variable under a radical and your index is even, what we do not want to do is to get an imaginary solution. So to safeguard against that, what we'll do is we'll say that our radicand, what's underneath our radical, has to be greater than or equal to 0. So when you solve this, you'll get uh, 3x to be greater than or equal to negative 12. We divide by both sides by 3. Make sure that if you do multiply or divide by negative, it flips your inequality. But you'll get this. So what this says is basically any x that's greater than or equal to negative 4, when plugged in here, will guarantee that this radicand is positive. So our interval notation uh, for this is going to be negative 4 to positive infinity. This time we will use a bracket around the negative 4 because that value will be included in our set. So again, look for limitations. If there are no limitations, your domain's all real numbers. Variable in the denominator, set your denominator equal to 0 and solve, and those are the values that your uh, variable cannot be equal to. And then variable under a radical with an even index, set your radicand equal to 0 and solve to find your domain.